Hello and welcome to day three of Vlogmas. Do you like one? Here you go. Okay, today I am going to talk about the stack of books that I have chosen for my December reads my Christmassy reads the first one is the three dahlias by Katie Watson I've shown this before on a previous video it is a murder mystery and we it says here one murder mystery convention three very unconventional detectives three rival actresses team up to solve a murder at the stately home of Lettuce Davenport, the author whose sleuthing creation of the 1930s, Dahlia Lively, had made each of them famous to a new generation. I am so excited for this book, I can't tell you. So there, you've got these three actresses and they're basically going to the stately home of a kind of Agatha Christie type character who invented a character called Dahlia Lively and they have played that character over the years. In attendance at Aldermere, the VIP fans staying at the house, the fan club president turned convention organiser, the team behind the newest film adaptation of Davenport's books, the Davenport family themselves and the three actresses famous for portraying Dahlia Lively through the decades. And it says down here at the bottom, when fictional death turns into real bodies, can the three Dahlias find the answers to the murders among the fans, the film crew and the family, or even in Lettuce's books themselves? This one I am literally starting today. I did try and read it earlier but then I thought oh I must do my vlog before I really settle down and relax in front of the fire. I've been to a hockey game this morning and I was absolutely frozen. My hands were blue. All the time I was there I was thinking about coming home and reading this book. So when I've finished this, hopefully in a few days, once I've finished this, I'll let you know how I got on with it. There was a toss up between starting the three dahlias or starting the postscript murders by ellie griffiths i'm also really excited about starting this one as well and it says here inventing crime stories can get you killed and on the back it says have you ever wondered just how authors think up such devious crimes the death of a 90 year old woman with a heart condition should absolutely not be suspicious but the thing is this woman with the heart condition has been a murder consultant who plotted deaths for authors <laughs> and knew more about murder than anyone has any right to so at first her death isn't seen as suspicious but then it is so this is the woman that has been helping authors come up with coming up with their crimes for their books and their murders for the books and i'm i i just love anything with writing or books within it so i just it's like a behind the scenes of how a book gets written but in this case the person that comes up with the idea for the murder is murdered so yeah, really excited about this one. And I think this one I will start as soon as I've finished the three dahlias. Now I've got two books here which are part of the 
British Library Crime Classics and these are two I picked up in York and I showed them on my York vlog from a few well, a month ago, two months ago because I went up in October. So we've got The Christmas Egg by Mary Kelly and Portrait of a Murderer by Anne Meredith. So, The Christmas Egg by Mary Kelly. What's this one about? It's based in London, as you can no doubt tell from the front cover. And it's the 22nd of December. Chief Inspector Brett Nightingale and Sergeant Beddoes have been called to a gloomy flat off Islington High Street. An elderly woman lies dead on the bed and her trunk has been looted. The woman is Princess Olga an emigre of Civil War Russia and her trunk is missing its glittering treasure. And this is described as a tightly paced, quirky and highly enjoyable jewel of the mystery genre. And Mary Kelly only died recently. So she was from 1927 to 2017, English crime writer, best known for the Inspector Brett Nightingale series, and her Gold Dagger award-winning novel, The Spoilt Kill. And this book, The Christmas Egg, was first published in 1958. So The Portrait of a Murderer by Anne Meredith. Adrian Gray was born in May 1862 and met his death through violence at the hands of one of his own children. And this was at Christmas 1931. OK, hold on. Did you have something to say? Hey? <laughs> What's just happened, okay? Let me just take you away from the light. Come here. Come here. Come here. She is feeling so sorry for herself because I um, took her out for a toilet earlier and um, forgot to let her back in again. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't have been long, only a few minutes, but you know, it's cold. This one's all right. She came straight back in, didn't you? But the other one was messing about. She was um, left outside. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart, come here. Oh. Yes, yes, you're very cute, aren't you? Yes, very cute, right. Okay, shall I... Um... Shall I crack on with the vlog? Oh, watch your head, sweetheart. Right, I'll crack on with the vlog now. So, well, what was I talking about? Portrait of a murderer. So anyway, I've lost my place now. Each December, Adrian Gray invites his extended family to stay at his lonely house, King's Poplars. None of Gray's six surviving children is fond of him. They wish he was dead and the following morning they their wish has been granted. Anne Meredith was best known as the author of the Arthur Crook series of detective novels published under the name of Anthony Gilbert. Now next I have an Anthony... Horowitz book called Magpie Murders. Now this is one I've had for a while and I've wanted to read for a while but I did think it might be a bit too, I don't know, a bit too murdery for me which sounds odd as I like to read about murders but I like the cosy murder rather than a kind of psychological one or a really graphic one. And I thought that this might be like that. However, I'm going to give it a go. And I think it's got quite a clever premise where it's about a crime writer called Alan Conway, who's been the best-selling author of his books with the detective Atticus Pund. And then his latest tale of murder at Pie Hall is not quite what it seems. Yes, there are dead bodies and a host of intriguing suspects, but hidden in the pages of the manuscript lies another story, a tale written between the very words on the page, telling of real life, jealousy, greed, ruthless ambition and murder. So, yes, I am really determined to give this one a go. 
and to see if it's as good as what I've heard people talking about. I thought, what better time than Christmas? So yes, this is on my list. And then my last two ones. Well, first of all, I've got a book of short stories called The Haunting Season. And this is Ghostly Tales for Long Winter Nights. And it says here on the front, winter with its unsettling blend of the cosy and the sinister has long been a popular time for gathering by the bright flame of a candle or the warm crackling of a fire and swapping stories of ghosts. Taking you from a bustling Covent Garden Christmas market to the frosty moors of Yorkshire, from a country estate with a dreadful secret to a London mansion, where a beautiful girl lies frozen in death. These are sorrows to make your hair stand on end, send shivers down your spine, and to serve as your indispensable companion to the long nights of winter. Now, I don't know about you, but I do love a ghostly tale, one that gets me sort of shivering, but I always get worried beforehand and think I might not be able to handle it. So... Once more, I'm going to have this and dip in and out of it over the Christmas season and see how I get on with it and really hope it. Um, I really enjoy it. Now, one of the authors, I mean, at the back, it says who the authors are of the short stories. Bridget Collins, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd, Natasha Pulley. And one of the last one there, it says, is Laura Purcell, who is the author of this book the silent companions and i shared this book in in my bookshelf makeover video a few videos back and i said this is something i've had for a while really would like to read it a bit scared of doing so so i'm going to try and give it a go over the christmas period once more i'll share the little eye the unsettling eye looking through the keyhole there and then you open it up on the inside and you get those very lovely end pages there. Newly married, newly widowed, Elsie is sent to see out her pregnancy at her late husband's crumbling country estate, The Bridge. With her new servants resentful and the local villagers actively hostile, Elsie has only her husband's awkward cousin for company, or so she thinks. For inside her new home is a locked room and beyond its door lies a 200-year-old diary hinting at the house's dark past and a deeply unsettling painted wooden figure, a silent companion that bears a striking resemblance to Elsie herself and there's there's the back page so that does remind me however that i had another book of short stories that i wanted to read over the christmas period and that's this agatha christie one called marple and i've mentioned it numerous times on my channel so I will possibly also add that to my list as well but I'm not going to overwhelm myself with too many books and I often change my mind and might find that I would rather read an um, Elizabeth Strout or a Maeve Binchy instead. I've also got here Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrink which I'm quite tempted by as well there's so many books and it does get a little bit overwhelming, but I'm going to give as good a go as I possibly can and read as much as I can over the next few weeks. And that bit between Christmas and New Year, I will, I will just be reading basically because I just love that time reading and journaling as I really rest up and get ready for the excitement of the year coming. Okay, I'm now going to end this vlog because quite honestly, once I've finished editing this, 
I want to go and sit down and start reading. So thank you for watching and I will see you again for Vlogmas Day 4.